Selamat siang, apa kabar? Saya punya nama Kristof Svoboda. Saya mau bagi cerita macam mana saya ada jumpa orang yang tukang kapal di Pulau Duyong. These words were spoken in Malay, a language which I learned during my time in Malaysia. I stayed there during the construction of a traditional Malay junk which I had built in order to make a childhood dream come true. The dream of living a life on the seas. In the summer of 1980, the keel of our boat was laid and only 11 months later, the vessel was launched. We named her Nagaplangi, which means Rainbow Dragon. My family and me, we roamed the oceans sailing Naga Pelangi for many years until we dropped the anchor again in Kuala Terengganu in January 1997. Thus, Naga Pelangi became the first Malay junk to have finished a circumnavigation. Malaysia, land of tropical sun, just a little north of the equator, surrounded by ocean. On the east coast of the Malay Peninsula, in the middle of the Trangano river mouth lies the island of Duyong. Here is the center of the last traditional shipwrights of Malaysia. The witnesses of the past grandeur of their age-old trade can be seen in the museum of Kuala Trangano. Originally the Malays settled the banks and the estuaries of their rivers. Boats and ships were the backbone of their water-based economy. They built them in many different shapes, decorated them with delicate carvings, and painted them in bright colors. Until the last century, this type of craft, which the Malays call Prahu Bazaar, was used for carrying cargo. Having finished the circumnavigation with Nagapelangi 1, I found that the thriving boat building industry was on the decline. Some people were still cultivating the skills of the old masters by building model boats. In 2003, we initiated the Nagapelangi project with the aim of reviving the ancient tradition. We started, for the first time in over 50 years, to build a big version of one of these unique vessels. We wanted to use the old techniques and document the construction in film and media in order to raise public awareness of this archaic art. To present a future prospect for the shipwrights and their magnificent boats, we combined the well-tested building techniques with modern elements of standard international yacht construction. The aim was to create a prototype of a yacht-style sailing boat drafted on the features of the traditional cargo freighter. Until today, Vast areas of Malaysia are covered with tropical rainforest. It is one of the eldest and most diverse of our earth. Here grows the tree, which the locals call Chengal. It is a giant of a tree, growing to heights of 60 meters, and at, at its base, it reaches a diameter of 6 meters. Even termites cannot harm this wood. Freshly cut, it is a sinker being heavier than water. It combines a breaking strength of several times that of oak with highest flexibility. This quality made it the preferred building material of the local boat builders. Today, Chengal is protected by a ban on export and logging is government controlled. Fully seasoned, Chengal toughens to an extent that it cannot be bent any longer. That's why the planks for a new boat building project have to be freshly milled.
Planks are placed in the bright sun to dry for one year. Then construction must begin. First the keel is laid, then the stem and the stern post are erected. These massive bronze bolts are used to fasten the stem post to the keel. The first plank, the garbage strake, is being prepared. This plank is of special importance since it defines the shape of the entire hull. In this archaic technique, the planks are heated with fire and then bent to the shape that the master builder controls. The planks will retain this shape after they were allowed to cool slowly. The plank is held in its future position using screw clamps. At this stage, the bottom edge of the plank and the beveled edge of the keel are not yet matching. This simple tool is used to mark a parallel of the beveled edge of the keel onto the plank. At the same time, the craftsman marks the position of the dowels which join the plank to the keel. Following this, the plank is taken down and the holes for the wooden dowels are drilled. The plank, which will have to fit accurately to the beveled edge of the keel, is planed down to the line which was marked before. The dowels are produced manually. A square cut piece of wood is firmly driven through a hole and thereby turned into a round dowel. The Malays call these dowels basok and the wood from which they are made is called penaga. It is an iron wood of red color and extraordinary density and hardness. Around 100 dowels are driven into the beveled edge of the keel. They will have to meet with the holes drilled into the garbage plant. The master is handling the adze with great virtuosity. To cork their boats, the Malays have developed an ingenious technique as well. They are using a bark which they call Kulit Gelam, skin of the Gelam tree. In western style corking, fibers of cotton and oakum are driven with a mallet and a corking iron into a wedge-shaped seam between the planks. The corking is then covered over with a putty. Here a strip of the Kulit Gelam is pushed over the tapered bazooks. Then the new plank is hammered home. Now the accuracy is put to the test. Will all of the hundred dowels slip into the assigned holes? A formidable feat. This way, a one to two millimeter gasket of the Kulit Gelam bark ends up 
separating the planks. This herbal caulking keeps the boats dry for years to come. Even the planking scarf receives dowels and caulking bark. The next plank is assembled under the watchful eyes of the master. Working this extremely hard wood blunts the tools rapidly. Therefore, they have to be edged several times a day. Amidships, two plywood frames can be seen. They were erected in order to indicate the intended shape of the hull. Neither plan nor frames, only eye and knowledge of the master craftsman determine the hull shape. The frames are fitted later into the finished hull. In the coming weeks, plank is tucked onto plank by means of the wooden dowels, creating a hull as if it were made in one casting. Contrary to European boat building, where the planks are adjusted to the framework which was erected before, the Malays do it just the other way round. Here the frames are prepared and adjusted to the finished hull. That is the unique feature of the Malay boat building. A stand is raised on which we will mount the pans that will hold the lead ingots from which our ballast keel will be cast. Generally, cargo boats do not carry external ballast. The cargo is their ballast. Since this prow bazaar was designed to be a pleasure craft, we decided to attach the major part of the ballast to the outside. This allows for more space inside the ship's belly. On top of that, the center of gravity shifts downwards, resulting in an increase of the momentum to resist the lateral forces on the sail. Our lead ballast will be held by bronze bolts cast directly into the lead. Casting mold is brought into position. Filler pipe is attached. The pans are filled with lead ingots. And then the fire is started. The 
valve is opened, the molten lead flows into the mold. The ballast keel is ready, all 10 tons of it. Here, the craftsman is working on the stern portion of the rubbing strake. A rubbing strake is a horizontal strip of wooden planking running lengthwise from stem to stern along the vessel. It is meant to protect the hull from chafe when going alongside a wharf and emphasizes the shear of the hull. The Malays call this rubbing strake butelis. The framework is still not complete. It keeps growing with the planks. Fifteen thousand of these silicon bronze screws hold the hull planks to the frames. The screws are countersunk and wooden plugs are glued into the holes. Here the rubbing strake is almost finished. The holes of the countersunk screws on the outside of the hull were filled with white color epoxy putty. One year after having laid the keel, all frames and stringers are in place. The hull is complete. The position of the stern tube is marked The construction is now towering more than six meters high above the ground. Two people are busy drilling the hole for the stern tube in which the shaft of the prop will run. The bolt nuts, which keep the sawn frames together, are sealed with green protective paint. A new piece of wood is delivered from which we will cut the figurehead. Our boat is named after this figurehead, Naga. This mythical creature, half snake, half dragon, was the patron saint adorning the bow of the boats of the pre-Islamic Malay seafarers. 
The vivid and detailed carving was reduced to a stylized symbol in Islamic times. The Malays call this figurehead Gobel. Gobel wood is put into position and adjusted, then taken down again and given its characteristic shape. After a lot of sanding, the priming coat of paint is applied. While the works continue on deck, a carpenter is already going about the interior works. The cockpit with the steering station is almost ready. The partition panels are fashioned in the style of the old Malay wooden houses. The aft cabin. All woodworks are handcrafted from solid wood. The companionway to enter the main cabin with galley and char table. Deck and cabin roof look white because they were epoxy coated for waterproofing reasons and painted. They will be lined with teak strips at a later stage. The skylight and the spiral staircase lead to a central cabin housing single and double berth. The day of the launching approaches. Heavy duty machinery is employed today when in the olden days the whole village flocked in to help push and pull. The boat is mounted atop a wooden sledge which runs on round timber. With united efforts, the round logs and the heavy planks upon which they run are constantly shifted from stern to bow.
At low tide, the boat is pulled down to the river bank. From then on, we have to wait for spring tide. Boat and sledge will be towed into the river, which had to be dredged to provide sufficient depth. Here we go, yes, three years after the building started, Naga Pelangi II is finally afloat. For the first time, the proud owner climbs on board his newly floating vessel. Our Prau Bazaar has to be moved out of the channel and has to be tied up to allow for the sledge which is still attached to the keel to be removed. The Gobel is looking out over the river. After the vessel was towed to deep water, the masts are stepped. The boat under full sail. For a very long time, the classic red junk sails have not been spotted around the local islands. We are looking forward to welcome you on board soon. Sanjata.